Greetings, my friends, and welcome back. It's day 18 of the boot camp. How you doing? Before we dive into this, how we doing? You doing okay? Maybe take a second to pause this and just type to me in the comments of this video. How you doing? You doing okay? You, you, are you hanging in there? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling empowered? Really what we're going for here is we want you to feel empowered. All right. So today, what, you know, throughout this boot camp, we give strategy and strategy and strategy and do this and do this and do this. Today, I want to point out because email marketing is, it, it can be tricky. It can be tricky because a lot of times email marketing, what happens is people, the, they'll, do certain things. For instance, though, I'm being very vague. For instance, they'll they'll copy the marketing style of somebody else without realizing that one important thing about their brand is you need to be unique, right? So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unpack the top ten mistakes that most newbies, or not even really newbies, just I mean, I see big corporations making these mistakes, but newbies, people who are inexperienced and and not great with connecting people through email marketing, we're going to go through the top 10 mistakes. So what not to do as you're building your email list and as you're trying to create more sales and more flurry of excitement through your email marketing, here are 10 mistakes that I see companies, individuals, businesses making in their email marketing. So let's dive right in. Mistake number one is assuming the job of email marketing is just to sell another click. Okay, so email marketing is far more than just a tool to sell. It is that, but it's far more. As we've mentioned in previous days, email is used to give your clients high value content, tell compelling stories, voice your opinions, overcome objections, all of which allow you to build a no like, and trust factor with your audience. We talked about this, I believe it was yesterday, the KLT, no like and trust. So if you try to sell before you have the no like and trust factor, which I actually, the word that I really love to use for this is influence. If you try to sell before you have influence, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It falls on flat ears or on deaf ears, it falls on deaf ears. So the no like and trust is really influence and if you try to sell before that happens it just doesn't work right once you've built that no like and trust factor the long-term result is that you can drive more sales and increase revenue in your business and change the lives of others by giving them valuable information okay these are really the two core things that we're trying to do via email marketing increase revenue change lives that's it and that's, I mean, if you think through, like, what's the purpose of a business, that sounds very elementary, right? But a lot of people don't really think through, what's what's the whole point of all of this? What am I here for? Am I, am I trying to sell something? What, what am I doing here? Right? They just kind of jump into a business because it was the best thing that they had on their plate in front of them at the time. Or they frantically started looking online for some sort of way to make money or they got fired from their job but it's like have you ever sat down and really thought like what's the goal it's to increase revenue and to change lives that's it okay now maybe you have other deeper whys behind that and i'm not trying to take away from those either okay <laughs> mistake number two sending short emails pitching offer after offer. This is this is pretty easy to do, okay? Especially if you listen to some of the some of the gurus in the industry who don't really know what they're doing, but they they just pitch offer after offer after offer. And their email marketing is just filled with a pitch fest of emails, okay? The tricky part about sending these types of short offer focused emails is that you can actually generate some sales from it in the short term, okay? It sometimes will produce sales in the short term, all right? The thing most marketers don't realize is that this can kill your email list like a toxic poison. Building a business is about playing the long game and very few companies do this well in email marketing or overall. You have to remember, I want you to write this down, I'm playing the long game. Write that down, I'm playing the long game. When you start to take business as a long game, all of your marketing will shift right it won't it won't feel so like 
it it won't feel so spammy and so needy right you'll just start to give and give and give and ask when it's appropriate right ask when it's appropriate just like in a relationship we've talked through that already in the boot camp mistake number three this is this is sort of the opposite actually sending education educational high value emails without selling anything so unlike mistake number two this is the opposite some individuals are scared to ask for the sale for a variety of reasons and thus they continue to do everything they can to educate and entertain their readers but they never actually get to a clear call to action they never actually say will you buy <laughs> so if you're constantly giving incredible content without ever asking for a sale to balance those scales your audience gets it, they they are trained to expect everything for free they should say expect expect everything for free now look there's somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk he he has written a book if you haven't read it again i i don't have any financial interest in this but if you haven't read this book it's called jab 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 right hook okay Gary Vaynerchuk wrote this book jab 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 right hook and what he says in this book essentially if you haven't read anything by Gary Vaynerchuk I highly recommend it he's got a couple books jab 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 right hook and crush it uh, both are centered around marketing they're very important to this very idea so I would go pick those up if I were you give them a read grab them on audible give them a listen okay but his idea is give value give value give value ask right build up build rapport build rapport build rapport build trust build trust build trust ask okay and if you're lacking here's the here's the weird piece of this if you're lacking this people get trained okay I get everything for free from this person they never sell me anything and then when you ask for a sale after having done that for so long what happens is is they're like well what I don't buy things from you I don't pay you money it needs to be a balanced relationship okay all right mistake number four tiptoeing around the sale this is this is so common this is so common when people lack the self-confidence or self-esteem they find it hard to believe in what they're selling and they act timid about the sale but here's the catch if you believe in your product it's important that you don't withhold the grain from your audience. Lives aren't going to be changed. Revenue is not going to be generated if you're too scared to ask for the sale. This is super important. This is actually an old proverb, okay? So, I, look, if you're not religious or whatever, that's okay. But this is an old ancient proverb from the Bible where it says, uh, essentially, it, it, those who withhold the grain will starve and those those who those who um and but those who essentially it says those who sell will have a feast now i'm paraphrasing here but don't withhold the grain that's the point of it right the point of that proverb is don't withhold the grain but instead sell give the value you have because it's it's valuable right the people in, in in the marketplace, the people in the town, the people in the world, they need the grain. It's good grain. It's a good product. Sell. When you're apologetic about the sale, your subscribers can feel a hesitation and they won't perceive you as a leader. They're going to see you as a newbie, somebody who lacks confidence and not somebody they're going to trust. Or you could even say this, not somebody who they're going to follow they're not gonna follow okay so don't tiptoe around the sale if you're gonna sell something ask be bold and go for it go for the sale okay number five mistake number five is being inconsistent with sending so look this is a real easy one guys okay the more emails you send the more sales you make the data proves that to be true over and over and over again some people say well geez I, I don't want to email them too much I don't want to No, the more emails you sell send the more sales you make sending emails infrequently 
not only reduces your sales, but it also increases spam complaints from subscribers because they're unfamiliar with their name. They open the email, okay? They open this little envelope email thing, and your name is here, and they don't even know who you are because they barely ever hear from you, okay? So some people are like, well, I don't want to bother them. It actually does the opposite. You're going to increase spam complaints, and it could hurt your deliverability overall. Not a good solution, right? Number six, overly obsessing over open rates and click stats. Okay, look, I'm not saying that these stats aren't important, but these clickbait type subject lines can get a ton of opens and clicks, but if you're not measuring the sales data, you're gonna be confused as to what's really working. So writing quality emails that actually help people is more important than getting your open rates up, okay? Once you, see, here's the thing. And I found this to be true over and over and over again, both in copywriting, in video creation, in content creation, in emails. If you focus yourself down on quality that actually helps people, that actually helps people, okay? What happens is the open rates eventually go up. You'll get the unsubscribes, okay? That's okay. You'll get unsubscribes, that's okay, and I'm gonna talk about that next. But the thing is your open rates will go up because the content, the quality is there. People people know you to be somebody who delivers, okay? Mistake number seven. This is a big one. Worrying about unsubscribe rates. Unsubscribes are good, okay? I want you to read that twice, and I want you to write that down for yourself. Unsubscribes are good a good thing for your business. For your email marketing it's healthy okay it's sort of like if you have weeds over growing your your lawn right unsubscribes are like pulling the weeds and getting the weeds out okay when you when you email consistently with high value content and ask for a sale at the appropriate time anyone who unsubscribes is just genuinely telling you that they don't want to be contacted that's it that's fine all that's happening in this scenario is that you're attracting more buyers. You're attracting more buyers. That's the mindset shift you gotta have. And speaking directly to your ideal av avatar, which means that you're repelling, you're, you're sending away non-buyers. The cool part is, is you reduce the risk of spam complaints because unsubscribes essentially clean your list. And that helps to not have deliverability issues with your emails. It's really powerful. And, and guess what? What that does is that frees you to not feel bad or to feel like you're failing or to feel any of that stuff. You don't have to feel any of that, okay? Mistake number eight, sending boring or misleading emails, meaning clickbait type emails. Nothing kills sales more than boring or misleading emails. People don't want to open an email from a company to discover there's a snooze fest of irrelevant content that's just like, what are we doing here? On the contrary though, what you probably don't realize is that people actually love to purchase from interesting, compelling emails or emails that deliver a perfect offer at the perfect time. Hey, people love to buy. You love to buy. This is what a lot of newbie marketers forget when they get started online. People love to purchase. Write that down because this is super powerful, right? A lot of times when people start marketing, and because they're now on the other side of that relationship, that marketing relationship, they forget that they themselves enjoy buying things. It's a rush of adrenaline. It's the excitement of opening a package or watching a training or trying new software, guys. It's invigorating, right? Never forget that people love to buy and then just become a master at story, story selling and emails to captivate your audience and call them to purchase. People love to buy. And now that, you know, when you turn into a marketer, you start experiencing people reject you or say no to your offer and you, and you forget that when you do marketing well and you, and you put the offer down in front of somebody's face at the right time, they love to purchase. Don't forget that. This is so huge. Mistake number nine, not using value triggers. Earlier in the boot camp, remember, we talked about the value triggers that are more important than just saving money or making money or losing weight or anything like that. There are psychological triggers that cause people to purchase. And if you're constantly only using one angle to pitch, you're really only targeting one type of person. So 
if I've got a list of a thousand people, there's definitely going to be different types of subscribers who respond to different triggers. They're different. Different types of people are going to respond to different types of triggers. If you send out emails that use different triggers, you cover a much wider audience and you'll be able to maximize your sales. Okay? So different types of triggers, different value offers. Mistake number 10. This is the final mistake. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's more mistakes, but these are the top 10. Copying the style of other marketers. Copying the style of other marketers. So usually when somebody is new, they feel lost and overwhelmed. Maybe you feel that way. Okay, If that's you, just don't worry. Every single marketer has been there. But it's important to remember that each human has their own voice, their own viewpoints. And when harnessed, they can usually be very entertaining when you become you and embrace you. There's only one Dave Sharp in the world. There's only one Frank Kern in the world. There's only one Gary Vaynerchuk in the world. You don't need to try to emulate them. Their styles work because they are unique. Look, when it comes to a brand, when it comes to email marketing, when it comes to all of this stuff, this applies way more to email mark to to all of marketing than it does just emails, but their styles work because they're unique. And I want you to write that word down in big bold letters. I am unique. My brand is unique. My voice is unique. It deserves and write that word down. This is a really powerful word. It deserves to be heard. Some people, uh, for cultural reasons or for religious reasons or maybe even for gender reasons, have had their voice squashed or pushed down or said, you should be seen and not heard their whole life as kids. And then they don't really believe that they deserve to be heard. So don't let that happen to you. That's the most important mistake that most marketers make. They become a copycat of somebody else because they, they don't realize they've lived their whole lives as a copycat of someone else. They've lived their whole lives emulating their parents. They've lived their whole lives falling into the trap of the nine to five and blah, blah, blah. And they're just, or whatever it is. And then a few mo months into their marketing, they wonder why it's not working for them like it did for the XYZ guru, right? You have your own voice. There's only one you in the world, so harness that voice. Get good at story, story selling and write copy every single day with the intention of getting better at your ability to captivate people with the written word. Okay. Remember, your style is unique. Your voice is unique. You have a unique message to get into the marketplace, so don't withhold the grain. Give it to the people. Okay. Now, I want you to take some notes here especially centered around we have a, a little page in this in this uh, in this PDF guide we have a little page for notes I want you to just sit down and just take a couple minutes to think through this whole unique voice thing that I talked about here has your voice been squashed has it been have you been able to clearly get your message out with your unique voice right your sense of humor right your sense of empathy right your set whatever it is I mean whatever is really your brand maybe it's grit and resilience what is it what is your voice what's sent what is your voice unique around what is it center around and I want you to leave a comment I want you to talk to me tell us tell us a little bit about your voice has it has it been heard do you want it to be heard is that important to you tell just process that a little bit right okay now I'm gonna leave this a little bit more open-ended and here's why sometimes and maybe this is you we're so trained to be students right well here's what I here's what I my one of my biggest regrets about school is I learned what to think rather than how to think so I'm gonna leave this one a little bit open-ended because if you're anything like me you love to be trained to to have a certain set of questions to write down and I have an assignment to get done and you know on and on and on I'm gonna leave this open-ended and I'm just gonna make the instructions here for you to process it just process your voice what's it been like what's it been like do you feel like it's been heard do you feel like it's been squashed do you feel like it's been pushed down what's it been like what's it been like for you 
I want you to process that in the notes of this and you can leave a comment here in this video as well there's no right or wrong answer to this we're not gonna come after you if you don't leave a comment okay <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your voice what's unique about it what's important about it is there anything important that you think you, you needs to be heard in terms of your marketing okay we will see you again tomorrow for day 19 have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is for you. See ya.